to have a very short interview with him. So we feel highly privileged to have him on this occasion. So I just would like to place a one important question which always kept lingering in my mind. I wanted to know what made you to choose this profession, first of all, to be a teacher? Yeah, you see, uh, I was a teacher by choice rather than by chance. I did not get into teaching after the college uh, studies because I did not get any other job. I had another job and uh, I gave that up because I found that in that job I was something like a fish out of water. And therefore I took up teaching because that is something that came naturally to me. So I could have gone on in my previous job and gone into higher positions and all. But I preferred a teaching job where I could deal with the children and be a part of their growing up and a part of their formation. And that is, why, that is how I came to teaching. That's really great, sir. Uh, we also would like to know the choice being a teacher. Do you think it is more challenging in the present situation? So, uh, the career of teaching is not actually financially as remunerative as in other professions. But then what happens is that the satisfaction is much more. Especially when I started my career as a teacher, the, uh, the returns were in terms of money was very, very uh, small. But uh, later on, of course, it became a little better. And during these days, it is much better than what it was when I started out. But the satisfaction you get out of it is immense. And particularly the satisfaction you get out from a private uh, school job is supposed to be really immense compared to a public school uh, as a teacher. That's really good to know, sir. As a teacher, can you tell us how to enjoy teaching our subject? Yeah, that's a good question. The first and foremost thing is that we as teachers have to be really knowledgeable in our subject. We have to know our subject inside out, upside down, whatever you want to call that. Okay, And when you know the subject and you are delivering your uh, ideas and concepts to the children and they respond to you, that means that your teaching has been fruitful, has been successful. And the moment they respond to you, the more they respond to you, the more you feel like you can do that. And that is the way of enjoying your teaching. So the fundamental basic thing is that a teacher will have to know his or her subject very, very well. And for that, he or she will have to do a lot of reading a lot of uh, writing, a lot of discussions and uh, attend a lot of seminars and all that as much as possible and know the subject well and then be very good at expressing whatever the uh, concept is okay? I mean your ideas and if you are able to convey that to the children the children will naturally respond to you and this is a kind of you know uh, uh, a kind of chain reaction right? That is, when they respond to you, you enjoy teaching and when you enjoy teaching, they respond to you but the more better. And so that is how the, the chain reaction that happens. Okay, so the most important thing is that the teacher must know his or her subject thoroughly. That's truly knowledgeable, sir. So you have been a teacher for some years and all of a sudden, you were happened to be a leader. So how do you find this transition? You see, the transition did not come to me all of a sudden. In fact, you know, I joined the Hilltop School as the head of the science department. So there is already a little bit of a leadership role there. And then from then on, I went on to become the vice principal of the school. And from there, I was promoted as a principal of the school. So the leadership role did not come to me suddenly like that. And then gradually, I managed to grow into that. So, as a leader, what are the challenges that you faced, 
especially with the teachers and with the students and also with the staff who are associated with it. See, a leader or a principal has got his own vision of how an institution has to be run and how it has to be moved. In order to get that perspective done, he will have to hold the staff that is under him and convince them about the goals and the uh, targets of the, of the institution or what we call the really the, the ethos of the institution. Exactly. So to get them to understand the ethos of the institution and to get into the, the goals that we are envisaging for the institution, it takes a little bit of time and it takes a little bit of training for the teachers to uh, get them into a, a work as a team like. Okay, so that is one of the challenges, especially in the early years. Yes. But, but later on, as, as time passes, you know, it becomes a little easier because the communication becomes a little more difficult and easier. And so they understand what, what the principal uh, wants to be done. And the principal knows exactly who is going to do what and where and all that, you know. So gradually it becomes a little uh, easier. But the, the, in the beginning years, what I found was that to convey to the teachers the goals that I had set for myself and set for the institution and uh, the, the ethos of the institution and uh, so that was a little bit of a, a challenge in the beginning especially. That's really great story. Almost half a century of being a teacher, what is your vision for the future? Uh, future in terms of uh, this school or uh, my future? Terms of uh, you see, this school, when I took it up, it was uh, a small school, we had somewhere around 600 to 700 students and uh, today we have uh, close to 1200 students all together. So it has been a, a long journey, very successful journey so far, that's one thing. Second thing is that we have established ourselves as a very well-known, renowned English medium school. When I talk about English medium school, there are so many English medium schools that are around. They are English medium for the sake of English medium, for just in the name of an English medium. But then in reality, in actuality, they are not really English medium schools. As we know, English medium schools in uh, uh, the metropolitan cities and all that. Okay. Yes. Now, we have managed within this 10 years time, to position ourselves as a real English medium school as understood by people who know English medium schools in the metropolitan cities. And so that is some positioning that we have done and we have done that very successfully. So my vision for this school would be, I would imagine that in the very next, very uh, close future, say within around 74 years or 5 years time at the most, this school will be uh, really in demand as a real English medium school. And I would imagine that we will be having somewhere around say 1500 students in the school, high school at the Now, the, the other thing is that we have managed to position our PU segment as a real center of excellence. And I am sure that the, the results of 2019-20 was really very good and we had a 100% pass in PU and then the, this result of this year also, last year of course we did not have a, uh, an exam as such and this year also I am expecting very good results and not only in terms of the PU but also in terms of uh, the competitive examinations which will position us as one of the sought after PU colleges in the near future in this particular area and also it will be growing a little bit faster, a little bit more in the subsequent years. And therefore I would imagine that we would be having a very good strength, so say somewhere around 300 to 400 PU students all together, first PU as well as second PU. And we would be running a very successful competitive examination coaching uh, classes, just like any other reputed uh, uh, colleges around. And so that would be more or less the long-term vision that I have got. You see, 
the first thing that we have the groundwork we have already done and we have already established our credentials as a very good English medium school. And uh, uh, the fact that our even the little children they speak very good fluent English that is supposed to be a great credit to the, the teamwork that the teachers have done. Exactly. Okay. And uh, so now it is supposed to be we are in a position where we are a going to or we are in a position to launch ourselves into the next stage of growth. And that growth I am sure will take place within around say four to five years time. And uh, you will be the one that guides that growth. We all hope for the best, sir. Being more passionate, dedicated and committed leader, how do you think one choose his co-workers? You see, we get a lot of uh, applications for uh, teacher's job. And uh, one of the very basic things generally I look at is whether the candidate has got good language ability. Of course, before that, we check the, uh, the credentials of the candidate in terms of the certificate that we use on them. But uh, one of the important things that we have to check is the language ability of the teacher and especially to teach whatever subject he or she is teaching through the English language. <coughs> because as we said, <coughs> we are a purely English medium school. And so it is important that the teacher will be able to convey her ideas through the English medium. And uh, so the children will be picking up all the words and the language that the teacher is using. That is the uh, first thing. Uh, and the second thing is that we will have to find out if the teacher is a... Uh, I mean, I, I'll give you an example. We had a, we had a case of a teacher whose uh, uh, reputation was not that great. So at the end we had to uh, say no to a, a situation where we had said yes. So we have got to find out whether the, the reputation of the teacher is good, especially if uh, he or she is coming from a previous experience. And uh, uh, so it is very important that we uh, select the teachers very carefully so that our a, the aim of our institution will be fulfilled and the needs of the children will be met. That's great. Sir. I would not rather say that the journey is going to end. I would say that the journey is going to begin. How are you going to take this part? Well, <laughs> there are many kind of uh, uh, beginnings that we can have. Uh, you see, from here, uh, I will take a, a, a rest. And then during that time, I will decide what to do. And probably I will be keeping myself occupied and busy. Something like what I did with that, the Enmagaje translation. So that translation as such has taken me about two months or something. And it has kept me occupied over that period of time. So like that, I will be able to keep myself occupied with other uh, engagements similar. I have been a very avid reader. So I do have a lot of books that are piled up to read. So I will be reading a lot of uh, books that I really like to read. For example, I really love to read history. And uh, so that is one of the things that I plan to do. So like that, you know, as time passes by, there will be a lot of uh, things that I would like to do. But I can assure you that I will not be sitting down idle. And uh, it, it will be a kind of life that is really filled with uh, uh, something or the other. Very constructive and very good one. So when you look back, what do you see that has grown from a scratch to this level? You mean the school? Yes. Oh yeah, there has been a lot of changes, there were huge changes that have happened. You see, when uh, I joined in, uh, the second floor of this school building was being built, especially to my left ear, that uh, part was just being built, there was a lot of construction activity that was going on at that time. And then that wing was uh, completed and this stage at which we are sitting down was just supposed to be a, a little bit of a, a raised platform made of bricks. And uh, we used to be having the annual day there. Uh, later on, I think it was in 2014, we started the building with the construction. 
and uh, in 2014 itself we started the uh, first PU. I mean, it was not actually the PU; it was the uh, class 11 of the CBS history. But later on, we realized that uh, uh, there was not much of a demand for the CBSC class 11 and 12. But the demand was for the PU, the state-run PU board, and therefore in 2015 we shifted to the state-run PU. That batch that was uh, uh, that we commenced in 2014 with the CBSE class 11, that batch batch passed out in 2016, and we had a 100% result at that time with that particular batch. <coughs> and then, of course. In the first batch of PU, we had a very small uh, uh, group and that also, excepting for one uh, casualty, we had uh, uh, very good results from there. So, uh, overall, in physical terms, the school has expanded and all that means we had added this PU as well. Also, in number terms, we have uh, added a lot of uh, called students. So, as I told you a little earlier, uh, from around 600 to 700 at that time when I took over, it is now standing at around 1200. And then of course we have had a lot of additions in, in the terms of the, the gates that we have put up, the development of the playing fields, then the infrastructure facilities that we had, the number of buses that we had. When I joined in, we had just around four buses, I think, if I remember correctly. But today I think we have got around 17 buses. And uh, so you can imagine the, the huge amount of uh, uh, expansion that has taken place over this particular decade. And as I told you, the one that is, the thing that is really more emphatic and more noteworthy is in terms of the quality of uh, children that, uh, that pass out, that uh, study here. And in terms of not only the language that I am talking about, not only the, the expertise with the English language, but even their behavior, their attitude, their body language and all that is far, far different from what the, the normal run of the schools have. And so, if you look at the expansion that has taken place, the expansion has taken place in terms of uh, space, in terms of uh, numbers, and in terms of quality of uh, the uh, output that we have got from this school. Excellent. In this institution, you have passed almost one decade. Being a leader, more than a leader, being a teacher. You have seen your students blooming and they were just a budding flowers. You know, how exactly you felt when you saw them growing? So what message that you want to convey to us in the course of their journey? You see, uh... This almost 10 years have passed. 10 years minus a few months. Okay. And you do not, uh, I am not able to convey to you the great joy that one feels when one sees these little kids growing up in front of us. And today, for example, there are uh, some of these children of the first batch, 2013, who have already been, I mean, uh, who have already become doctors. And uh, there are others that are engineers and there are people who are really on a job. And you see the great growth that has happened between the time that they were very small and today what they are. That is a great joy that, you, that a teacher feels. Okay, so when you realize that you have been a part of this journey of theirs, you really feel very delighted with that. There, there is no... Uh, better compensation or better uh, reward than that great joy, that thrill that you feel of having been a part of their lives. Exactly, sir. It has been a golden period, Sir Joseph, being as a principal in this great institution. And you have also received enormous support from the management. So what do you have got to say to the team of management? You see, when I joined here, Father uh, Subhash was the manager. And then uh, after that in 2013, Father Shijo took up the uh, administration uh, the job. Now Father Shijo was a very dynamic person and he uh, really supported me in uh, whatever I suggested. 
and he had given his input also to that. So we had a very close understanding between us and that is the reason why we started the PU segment and all that. So the rapport between the manager and me has been really excellent and that tradition was carried on by Father Sunil and Father Sunil has been really a pillar of strength to me and we have uh, almost to say grown with each other. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> he supported me in whatever uh, endeavor that I suggested and he had his own suggestions also which you know when I tell him something he accepts what, what I say and when he suggests something I accept what he says. If I have got an input to make I make it. If he has got a suggestion to improve what I suggest then we accept that. So there is a lot of give and take, really literally a lot of give and take between Father's men and me. And that is the reason why uh, over these last two, three years, we have seen a lot of development in the, in the school in terms of physical structure, in terms of facilities that are, that are uh, available both in the uh, school as well as in the hospital, and in terms of the quality that, that we have been able to do. We also <coughs> had a lot of discussions about the training program for the teachers and those teachers that have been really, uh, what do you call, uh, adaptive to those training programs, they have really profited out of that. And we have got a very good team of teachers today that are really well trained and it's all because of the, the rapport that has been created between the principal and the manager, particularly between me and Father Shijo in the beginning and of recent times between Father Sunil and myself, we have had a tremendous understanding and I really admire Father Sunil because he is completely, totally dedicated to what he is uh, asked to do. Excellent. What is the mantra of success to you? That's, that's very difficult to, uh, to answer. But you know, the simple mantra of success to anybody in any career is be true to yourself and true to your job. Okay, you remember what, uh, what Hamlet says, you know, be true unto thyself and it shall follow as the night the day, thou shalt not be false to any man. So if you are true to yourself and you are convinced about your mission in life, then you will give your total wholehearted effort into that. And it is bound to uh, succeed, it is bound to uh, produce the fruits that you desire. So the mantra is very simple, be true to yourself, be honest to what you are doing and be very very sincere in what you are doing. And that's what I have found is a secret of success. That's wonderful. So this campus has been a great driving force for many people to come in. How do you feel being in the lap of this nature? Oh, it's beautiful. This, this surrounding is really wonderful. I remember there was Dr. Keyes that used to visit us every year from Netherlands. He was a counsellor, student counsellor. He used to come here and one year I remember he told me, he told me, I love to see the rain. And I told him, why don't you come in June, July and all that, you know, then you'll be able to see all the, the rain as much as you want. And uh, he was really delighted with the surrounding here. Then I pointed out to him, you see, if you look around here, you see the number of different shades of green that you see. Especially if you look at uh, the whole thing from the top there, from the top there, the statue of the uh, From there, if you are looking, you see the beautiful panoramic view of the city. It really will be really bewitching to anybody who comes here. To the, the, really, the climate is really very good. Uh, it's uh, cool, never very hot. The only problem is that there is a lot of rain around, and uh, but then that, that is a very pleasant for mo most people. Okay, it's truly really nice, sir. If you have to write something in the book of memory, 
about your journey being as a leader teacher in this great institution what is that you are going to register well that's one of the things would be uh, the great results that we have had over the last nine batches of uh, cbsc students that have passed out that yes, uh, we had a clean slate of 100% uh, and this 10th batch that is going up in uh, Uh, March 2022 I am sure will not be any different from the previous one it will be as great as that so overall you one of the landmarks in this year has been the uh, results the other thing that would uh, uh, i would keep it in, in my mind is really, the great annual days performances that we had and uh, i remember some of the annual days that we had uh, in 2017 or the 18 even 2019 when we had the annual day and they are all spectacular successes because of the cooperation of the children the uh, you know the talent that the children have uh, exhibited the cooperation of the teachers and that you know it uh, tells me that we have come a long way from being a very small school to being a very classical established So that is another of the things that landmark things that uh, will remain in my memory. And then, of course, we had the other activities like the sports days that we had, the sports activities that we had organized. And uh, one of the things that I would like to point out is, like for example, you know, the the other day we had the uh, principals meeting of the SSSC. Yes. And all those principals that came, they were really impressed with, uh, with everything. the building with the surrounding with the, the behavior of the children the way that the children uh, met them talk to them and all that you know and most of them told me that this is a a classical reflection of the values of the principles amazing yeah. uh, indeed because you know what happens is that uh, if the children have been uh, so impressive it shows that the systems and the values that we have tried to inculcate are the right ones and we have gone about it in the right way so that's a, a thing that will remain in my mind for pretty long time thank okay. you truly great sir truly great. so this great institution has sheltered so many students they have got a hostel here what do you have got to say about it you see this is a place where the population is very small and uh, if we are going to get those 1500 students into the school and 400 students into the field the hostel will have to be play a very wide role and uh, that means children from outside chikmagalur district and uh, from maybe even from outside karnataka will have to finally be attracted to a center of excellence and that is what uh, we are trying to build up and we have managed to do that to a certain extent in the in the uh, education sphere and this reputation has to go out into the uh, outlying areas and all and more and more people should be coming into the hospital in order to stay here and study here and be present and therefore in that context you know, the hostel will have to play a very very wide role i think the uh, administrative reforms that have been put in place in the hospital of uh, recent they do play a vital role they have a very important role in that and they do have got a lot of uh, say in attracting the students so for example in spite of the fact that we we are taking in only students from class 6 up we still have somewhere around 100 students in the hospital and uh, uh, going forward i am sure that there will be a lot of demand for the hostel and uh, the hostel will have to play a very vital role now you see the the important thing that has happened in the hostel of recent times is that uh, uh, the studies have been very streamlined in the hostel there has been a provision of for uh, uh, tuitions that are uh, in the hostel and also gradually over the last uh, uh, two years we have seen 
that the results, the academic results of the children studying in the hospital have drastically improved and they are performing much better. So now gradually what has happened is that there is an atmosphere of academic excellence in the hostel also. So those children that are coming into the hostel, they want to study and come into the hostel. And therefore we will see more and more people coming to make use of the facilities here and that will be one of the important factors that will decide the growth of this school and the future of the school. Time is now changed. You might have witnessed a crucial challenges and you have given a wonderful solutions to it. What message that you will give forward to your student community? You see, uh, any organization or any school for that matter uh, educates children and the children at the end of their education, at the end of their time in the school, they are fiercely loyal to the school. But that is something I feel a little, uh, you know, disappointed, I can say. But uh, the message that I would, I would uh, uh, give to the children of today and the successive generations is that you are in an institution of repute like this. You get an excellent education. You make use of it. Follow the, the value systems and all that that have been imbibed here. And be loyal to the institution that has nurtured you so far. That, I think, is something that every, all the students should be able to remember. Keep doing You have been a man of willpower and great strength. And if you look at today's generation, you would rather think that why this generation is so weak or so fragile. How to have that energy, how to have that enthusiasm, how to be curious always, especially as a teacher. How do you think that I can be more energetic all the time? You see, uh, the most important thing is that uh, a child who is in standard 9, 10 and all that should be having a, uh, an aim in mind, should be having a, a kind of perspective that, you know, when I grow up, I want to do this, one, so on. I want to do this, I want to do that. Some kind of, uh, uh, you know, aim they should be having, some kind of goal that they have got in life some kind of target that they have got in life, that, that they, they should be at. But unfortunately what happens is that these days, most of the families are nuclear families. The children are pampered so much that they think that they can carry on like that through life in that way. And they do not have anything to achieve in life, they do not have anything to accomplish in life. That is something that is uh, that I notice uh, these days. And, uh, being passionate about academics, you know, what I notice is that uh, people have lost the habit of reading. So when they have lost the habit of reading, they have lost that perspective and vision that they were supposed to have. They have lost that taste for academic things. Are. And so somehow or the other, we will have to make sure that the, the habit of reading is brought back to schools and children start the uh, reading. And then, you know, that will open up their perspectives and that, they, that will give them more ideas and all that. And that will bring them back into the academics and not as it is today, just academics as a touch and go affair. They learn something by heart, they produce that in the exam and they get some results out of that, they are quite happy about it. But that passionate eagerness for excellence is missing because that academic milieu is no more there and that reading habits has gone and therefore they have got very few children have got really a kind of uh, passion aspirations and all that so that has to be brought back and the family the parents they play a very big role in that and also the the teachers will have to contribute to that and that will be a, a great thing that we can do to the next generation truly really great hearing you sir
let the glory of this great institution go on talking to you for a while is having a great knowledge i feel and also i take this opportunity sir to salute you and also to have a great anticipation that i will be walking into your footsteps take us forward and be with us always all the best i would like to uh, introduce to you my interviewer of today mr sunil patrick mr sunil patrick has been hand picked after a long process to be my successor as the principal at the st norbert cbse school and st norbert pu college he originally uh, originally comes from udupi his family migrated to mysore and uh, he was born and brought up in mysore and he did his education in mysore he has got an ma degree in english and he has got a, another ma degree in political science he is a ba he has got a, a lot of experience in teaching and uh, he has been the principal or he was the principal of st joseph central school in mysore and uh, he is a very talented uh, young man and he is good at music he is good at uh, organizing he is uh, uh, a great speaker and in addition to all that he is also a lawyer he is a qualified lawyer so he comes along with a great academic background with a lot of enthusiasm a lot of ideas and uh, a kind of passion for the educational field so i introduce to you mr sunil patrick my successor at st norbert school 